We are live at the Sheridan Hotel in Midtown Manhattan. The Clinton Global Initiative about to start its fourth annual meeting. Mr. President, thank you very much for taking thank the time you. to speak with us. What people at home, I'm not sure, understand is the enormity of this economic crisis. The president came on television last night, and I want to know if you can help explain whether or not we really are looking into the abyss. John McCain said this is the worst crisis in the country since the end of World War II. Is it this bad? I think it has the potential to be this bad because in the end, all financial transactions in all countries rest in part on confidence. That is, your local bank, for example, will insure your account up to $100,000 or more, but they are only required by federal rules and never have been required to keep more than a certain amount of, if you will, cash reserves, which is much less than it would take to cover all the outstanding obligations of the bank. Uh, this is facilitates economic growth. This is not risky subprime mortgages and derivatives and all that funny stuff. When people lose confidence in everything down to the point where money market accounts seem unstable and banks won't loan each other money, that's bad. Uh, we need to do some things to insert confidence back into the entire financial system, part of which is the stock market, but all, it also includes the financial system. And uh, I thought actually, I listened to the President's speech last night and I thought it was well constructed to explain to people why there was a problem today with all the financial system and why therefore we needed to act. The th question people are asking out in the world and you hear these congressmen stand in the, in, the, in, in the Congress and talk about my constituents want to know why I should write or at least be billed for more than two thousand dollars for each and every human being in this country to help bail out these folks who were so reckless w with this money. Well, you don't want to. You don't want to do that. We we have to be careful not to have unjust enrichment. And I think the members of Congress have made that clear, and uh, both candidates for president have made that clear. They put out a joint statement, I thought, which was encouraging last night. But here's how it would work: if uh, if you want to keep a company afloat that's made some improvident investments, uh, some of them, one Lehman Brothers was allowed to fail, going to bankruptcy. Uh, and some of those same people you're worried about are taking up their assets at bargain basement prices. With uh, AIG, the big insurance giant, uh, I think that's going to be more typical. The government did loan them a lot of money, but they took an 80% ownership uh, interest in the company and they had to pay back with a pretty hefty interest rate. Mm -hmm. So I think that by stabilizing that company, the taxpayers will actually wind up making money. We made money when we helped Mexico. We made money in the Chrysler bailout. And in, more to the point, in the Great Depression, when we kept a million people in their homes, the taxpayers made money. That's why I think the Congress should take a day or two to analyze this to make sure that's the way it's done. That instead of subsidizing the undeserving, we use this to stabilize the economy as a whole and help those homeowners that are hardworking people. Does this have to be done in the next 48 hours? I, you know, I don't know about, I don't have a stopwatch, but because it's a confidence issue, like Warren Buffett yesterday put $5 billion in investment into Goldman Sachs. That's a confidence builder. People think he knows what he's doing. He got a pretty good deal, too. Yeah, he, he got a real good deal, but people think he knows what he's doing. Maybe that bought him another day. But the point is, it has to be done in a timely fashion. I think what they want to do is to guard against unjust enrichment, protect the taxpayers, maximize the stability and keep as many people in their homes as they possibly can because that will really save the economy and turn us around again if we don't have uh, we're going to have two million homes foreclosed on this year we don't want that again next year and is that going to be the single most important issue that this election hinges on i don't think so because uh, President Bush invited both uh, Senator Obama and Senator McCain to come back, be part of the congressional briefings, work on this together. Uh, I think they need to be attentive to it and, uh, you know, fulfill their responsibilities in the Senate and as the nominees of their party. Uh, but the larger issue is how are we going to bring the economy back? How are we going to create jobs and raise incomes? How, that's the long term stability. That is, there was too much investment in housing alone. We need a strategy here that will get America back across the board. 
Uh, that includes dealing with the, with the energy issues, dealing with, and the bills people are paying for that, and the job opportunities there, and dealing with health care. Uh, that, I think, that those big issues, I think, will tend to overcome the international issues. And who provides that best plan, do you think? Well, I'm supporting Obama, as you know, and I think <laughs> This I was think the that, gimme. This was the I, gimme. I, I think, morning. for the reasons I said in Denver, mm -hmm. I think that, uh, that he personally and our party generally tend to produce better economic results for ordinary people, and I think that, that uh, well, I, I, Senator McCain, as you know, I like. He's a friend of mine. I, I, I trust him in many ways. But the Democratic uh, economic philosophy and Obama's specific proposals, I think, will produce better results for ordinary Americans. Mr. President, uh, we have talked many times in the past about the Clo uh, Clinton Global Initiative. I hope you'll uh, let us take a rain check and have a more further discussion about it. Uh, well, we're doing great here. We're helping a lot of people. Thank you so much.